Seriously? What is this? She can't even make a decent meal. The voice of the mother-in-law echoes in the kitchen. Hey, that's way out of line. Talking back is pointless. Don't you dare talk back to your mother-in-law. Even with a husband who defends his mother, there's no one on the wife's side. I wanted to end this life, but I had given up on thinking about it. My name is Alicia. I'm 32 and work as a nurse at a local hospital. Married for five years now, we want kids, but it's just not happening when we want it to. Working at a general hospital means night shifts, and I'm feeling my age. Should I change jobs? I've been thinking about it a lot lately. There are other nursing jobs. I don't have to work at this busy hospital. A colleague who quit when she got married is now working reception at a clinic near her home. I'm so jealous. I never really considered quitting or changing jobs when I first got married. My husband, Dustin, wanted me to focus on housework, but I was stubborn. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to go back to work if I quit. Now, all my close colleagues are on maternity or parental leave, and I'm left to pick up the slack. Before I knew it, I've climbed the ranks to become second in command. It's fulfilling to be trusted with hospital-wide responsibilities. But there's a biological clock ticking. Shouldn't we think about having kids? I once suggested this to Dustin, but he brushed it off. Sure, when the mood strikes. Dustin and I are the same age. We met at a party when we were 25. He was always considerate, a real gentleman. He works at a major ad agency, so he's always well-groomed and has a lovely smile. I fell for him instantly, and we started dating after a few dinners. Everything was smooth sailing until we got married two years later. Now he's gained weight and rarely smiles. We both have our flaws, but are we really a couple if we're just sharing a bed? We hardly have time for meaningful conversations. The only way out of this rut is to have a child. That's what I've been secretly thinking. Recently, another issue has come up. Mother-in-law moved in, and we never even agreed to it. It started about three months ago when my father-in-law passed away from a long-term illness. Mother-in-law, who lived just a five-minute drive away, started visiting us more often. That's all there is to sympathy. That would have been fine, but her visits became longer and more frequent. One day, I came home exhausted to find mother-in-law in the house. She had made a copy of our key. Eventually, she pretty much moved in. Later, I found out her house had been sold. There was no going back. Mother-in-law, this apartment is meant for two people. We can't just have you move in. I tried to choose my words carefully, but it was in vain. How awful! You want to kick out an old lady? I heard from Dusty Bear that you have an extra room, so I'm doing you a favor by living here. I'm your husband's mother, so just be respectful and deal with it. She talks down to me like this. We've never had a good relationship to begin with. Living together has only deepened the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law conflict. And Dusty Bear, really? It feels weird to have a nickname for a man in his 30s. What's worse, Dustin calls her mama when she's around, which gives me the chills. I suspect he was a mama's boy when we were dating, but seeing it in action is a bit much. I've heard that how a man treats his mother is a good indicator of how he'll treat his wife. I used to find Dustin's kindness towards his mom endearing, but now it seems like all of his kindness is directed at her, not me. I've tried to talk to Dustin about the living situation multiple times. Dustin, we never agreed to this. Can you please talk to your mom? She's lonely since dad passed away. She lived nearby anyway, so it's not a big change, right? He always brushes me off like my feelings don't matter. Living together is way more stressful than living nearby. I'd even be okay if she rented the apartment next door, but sharing a two-bedroom is unbearable. I wish we could move to a place where we don't have to see each other all the time. Both Dustin and I have full-time jobs, so it's not like we're strapped for cash. We just haven't found the time to move. Hey, why don't we look at some new places on our next day off? Let's move somewhere bigger. 
you're the one who said we should save for when we have kids, remember? Stop changing your mind. Besides, I'm fine with this living arrangement. Aren't you benefiting from mom helping out around the house? You're fine because she's your mom! I wanted to scream, but what's the point? In the end, we've gotten nowhere, whether it's about moving out or living together. Today, I came home from work to more demands from mother-in-law. There's a Halloween tea party at Glenda's house next Tuesday. Can you prepare some treats? Next week? My shifts won't allow me to go shopping. Could you buy the ingredients yourself? I declined as I looked at my work schedule for the week. She has both the time and money, so why make such a request? Mother-in-law smirked and said, Store-bought treats would be embarrassing. Homemade is the way to go. That way we won't have duplicates. Oh, you mean the ingredients. What are you planning to make? My schedule won't allow me to go shopping. Before I could finish, mother-in-law cut me off. Oh, you're so clueless. Obviously, you're the one who's going to make them. You're so useless, haha. <laughs> and there it was, another verbal jab. I can't do it. I don't even have time to go shopping, let alone big treats. Please do it yourself. I tried to make my point, but mother-in-law wasn't listening. It's obvious who's more suited for this task between a full-time nurse and a retiree with plenty of time and energy. Still, mother-in-law persisted. Pumpkin cupcakes are easy. Just make the packaging Halloween themed. If you cut into your sleeve, you'll have time. Forget and you'll regret it. Ha ha ha. She left me with those ominous words and retreated to one of the two bedrooms. Why do I have to do this? I was already tired from work. And this conversation just trained me even more. Does she not understand how crucial sleep is for a nurse who's in a physically demanding job? I felt a bit relieved imagining mother-in-law showing up empty-handed, but I couldn't ignore her. Last time I didn't meet her demands, she spread rumors that I was cheating on my husband. Clearing up that misunderstanding with the neighbors was a hassle. Then, Tuesday came. I sacrificed three precious hours of sleep last night to bake pumpkin-flavored cupcakes. They looked cute in Halloween packaging, surely mother-in-law would be satisfied. But when she saw them, she said, What's this? You made these? Wow, you're talented. Talented at wasting ingredients and money, haha. <laughs> I thought I misheard, but her words were clearly directed at me and my cupcakes. Um, I made them just like you said. What's wrong with them? And it's really unfair to criticize me after making me do this. Before I could finish, mother-in-law showed me a bag, wrapped in department store paper. I instantly knew. She never intended to bring my treats. She just wanted to make me do the work. Rage boiled inside me. I was the fool for actually making them. I'm done being mother-in-law's puppet. What's in the bag, mother-in-law? You made me bake and then you went shopping yourself? Why are you always so cruel? Oh, did I say that? Just throw those trashy, uninspired cupcakes away. I can't bring them to the neighborhood tea party. I wanted to scream at this infuriating woman, but held back and started preparing for work. I barely slept less than three hours last night. I need to find a way to end this living situation and never see mother-in-law again. Why is Dustin okay with me suffering like this? Tears of frustration filled my eyes as I headed to work. Two months have passed since that incident, and today is New Year's Eve. We've managed to avoid any major fights, but that doesn't mean I've accepted this living arrangement. I've minimized conversations with mother-in-law to keep my irritation at bay. The hospital is busy during the cold season. It might not seem like much compared to doctors, but with increased appointments for vaccinations, this is the busiest time of the year. We're swamped covering for the doctors. Five years into our marriage, we didn't do anything special for Christmas, how could we, with mother-in-law living with us? I just focused on getting through the hectic holiday season. I had thought about going on a trip for the New Year's holiday, but Dustin wasn't interested. Let's just relax at home during the long holiday. Why don't you take a break too, Alicia? Just then, mother-in-law walked into the room, her eyes lighting up. It's New Year's Eve today. You've prepared a special breakfast, right? 
You wouldn't skip that, would you? Both Dustin and I were taken aback. We usually went to his parents' house to make a special breakfast together. When I asked a month ago if we were doing it at our place this year, mother-in-law had said, I'll make it myself this year. There's less to prepare since your father passed away. Looks like we've been duped again. Dustin, who should have heard that conversation, said, Mama, we can relax this year. Alicia, better start cooking or we'll have nothing to eat. What irresponsibility. Wait, mother-in-law said she'd make it, but do we even have the ingredients? Both of them played dumb. If only mother-in-law, who usually takes the lead in making the special breakfast, would help. Ugh, oh, of all times, she brings this up on New Year's Eve when stores close early. I rushed to three different supermarkets. Even 24-hour stores were running low on supplies because of last-minute shoppers. Dustin and mother-in-law were happily watching year-end specials in the living room. While I was cooking, Dustin asked, What about seafood dishes? I checked the time. New Year's was just an hour away. With pots on the stove filled with meat and beans, takeout was the only option. Sorry, I'm swamped. Can you go get some takeout seafood? Dustin, who had no intention of going out, left reluctantly. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't bring back anything for me. And why does he want seafood this year? We never focused on it before. As expected, Dustin returned with seafood for just the two of them. Here I am making sure we have something to eat, and he's blatantly setting plates for the living room. He didn't even offer to help, knowing I was struggling to make everything myself. Making a special breakfast takes a lot of time and effort. I was able to do that by preparing it in advance, and I was really tired of making it in a hurry. By the time I took a breather, dawn was breaking. Another all-nighter. But the dishes looked pretty good. Finally done. Now there shouldn't be any complaints. With that thought, I headed to the bedroom. The next morning, or rather just two hours after I collapsed into bed, I was awakened by noise in the kitchen. Mother-in-law and Dustin, who had gotten a good night's sleep, were probably ready for their special breakfast. Then Dustin came in and said something unbelievable. We're going out. You're probably tired, Alicia, so you'll stay home, right? Or do you want to go out for brunch? What? Brunch? My brain is already foggy from lack of sleep, and now it's filled with even more questions. I asked in disbelief. Wait, you want to go out for brunch? Right now? But I made a special breakfast, so we don't need to eat out, right? Well, yeah, but... I'm annoyed by Dustin's vague response and head to the kitchen. To my horror, my mother-in-law is about to throw away the food I stayed up all night to make. Hey, what are you doing? This trash is inedible, haha. <laughs> I thought I'd do you a favor and throw it away. Starting the new year with this? No way, ha <laughs> ha I manage to snatch the food from her, but in the process, some vegetables fall to the floor. Why is this happening to me? As I'm picking up the fallen vegetables, tears start to roll down my cheeks. Dustin, seeing all this, puts on his jacket without offering any help. All right, let's just go have brunch by ourselves, Alicia. Take care of the rest, ha ha. And just like that, they leave to enjoy their brunch. This can't go on. If we have a child, I can't raise it with Dustin. After cleaning the floor, I decide to eat the special breakfast I made. It's not bad if I do say so myself. Sure, it might not be as good as the special breakfast my mother-in-law makes every year, but considering I made it in a hurry, it's decent both in taste and appearance. As I'm eating, the intercom rings. Who could it be this early in the new year? When I go to the door, I'm shocked and decide it's time for revenge. Three days later, I'm packing up my things at home. All right, this is the last box. All that's left is to talk to my mother-in-law when she gets back. Just as I'm thinking this, she storms in. You've embarrassed me. What are you going to do about it? She yells at me. What's all the fuss? I haven't done anything. I reply calmly and she turns red. The neighbors are laughing at me. They're asking if I'm bullying my son's wife. They heard about the special breakfast. Clear up this misunderstanding right now. I didn't spread any rumors, but isn't it all true? Haha. <laughs> 
It seems the gossip-loving neighbors have spread the word about the New Year's meal. And what about Halloween? They think I wasted the treats you made. Now no one will invite me for tea. The person who visited me, left alone on New Year's Day, was Elisa, a leader in the neighborhood. I was surprised to see her at the door, since we usually only exchange greetings. Elisa seemed to have noticed that I wasn't getting along with my mother-in-law. She was concerned after seeing my mother-in-law and Justin go out together after the countdown party. It must be tough with your mother-in-law moving in, huh? She's been telling everyone that you and her son suggested living together. But everyone knows Crystal is just a neighbor and you're still young. They know something's off. Crystal is my mother-in-law. Elisa's words lift my spirits a bit. I had no idea my intrusive mother-in-law was saying such things outside the house. Elisa had asked me if I had any other interesting stories, so I told her about the special breakfast and the Halloween incident. It seems my mother-in-law's monstrous behavior is the talk of the town, and I couldn't be happier. She brought it all on herself. If she keeps complaining, worse things will happen to her. <laughs> what do you mean worse? I've lived in this neighborhood for years. You won't be able to walk outside if you cross me. My mother-in-law retorts, mimicking my tone. Then, suddenly, the home phone rings. I answer it and quickly hand it over to her. Her face turns pale. What? The neighbors are watching a live stream of this room right now? What's going on? I show her my mobile phone, which is on the TV stand. I had been live streaming her bullying tactics, using a method Elisa taught me. What is this? She tries to snatch the phone from me, but I explain that the footage is already live streamed. About 20 people are watching since it's a holiday. Realizing that breaking the phone won't help, she falls to her knees and begs me to stop the stream. I was wrong. I've done terrible things. Please stop the stream. We won't be able to live here if people see this. Ignoring her tearful pleas, I respond. The one who won't be able to live here is you, not me. I'm staying. She's furious, but seems to realize that she can't walk outside anymore now that her bullying has been exposed. Her face turns blue as she begs for help. Then let's all move far away. Don't abandon me. You're really clueless, haha. <laughs> Justin and I are getting a divorce. You're a stranger now. Please leave within a week, haha. <laughs> I packed a box in front of her. It's trash to me, but I've packed it for you, haha. <laughs> Yes, the stuff I was packing was for my mother-in-law and Dustin. I had already discussed divorce with Dustin last night and had him fill out the paperwork. I thought he would put up more of a fight, but he agreed easily. I found him an apartment closer to his work, so there was no fuss. Maybe he thought he didn't have to do housework because his mom was around. <laughs> From what I've heard through the neighborhood network, Dustin and his mom, who moved to the next town, are having a lot of issues. She's causing a scene at his workplace, demanding to be shown around because she's his mother. This has led to rumors about them being a weird mother-son duo, affecting Dustin's chances of promotion and causing him public and private humiliation. I can't believe that something like this happened to my former in-laws without me even knowing about it. I'm grateful to the neighbors who helped me and hope to help others who are being bullied by their in-laws someday.